up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Podcameras, as it always is. And today, we are gonna talk about three different types of photography that you can do right now in your own home. You don't have to leave, you don't have to buy anything specific. We're gonna go through them, they all share something in common. It's pretty exciting, but before we get into it, let's roll the titles. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, of course, is no different, but we are indoors. We're kind of stuck indoors with lockdown and stuff like that, which means we're limited a little bit with what we can do photography-wise. But there's some great stuff we can do around the house. There's some great stuff we can do in our own home without buying loads of expensive stuff to set up some kind of home studio. We can do it right now. So let's go through three different types of photography that we can do right now, which actually are super creative. And really, for me at least, they're really exciting because it's this kind of situation has forced me to actually explore some slightly more creative options. And I think, you know, it's fun to use things around the house and try something new. So we're gonna get into it. Let's go for the first one, which of course is food photography. Probably no surprises here. This is an easy one to do while you're stuck at home. You can do something with something you've you've made yourself. You can do something with something you've ordered. You can buy something from the shop and then take photos of it. It doesn't matter too much because ultimately it's all about styling your image. It's about lighting. It's about making things visually interesting. It's about different angles. So here's some just quick tips that I have found while doing food photography at home to keep the photography going. So the first thing is it doesn't really matter what the type of food is, whether it's, it could be anything from a stew, maybe a dessert, it could be like a sandwich, it could be almost anything at all. It's all about how you take the photo. So don't be disheartened. In fact, if anything, maybe the photography challenge would be to actually take a photo of something that you don't think is that photogenic as a food item but you can certainly make it into a really lovely photo. Now, second of all, of course, is about lighting. This is a big one, and this is actually something that is gonna be kind of common throughout the three different types of photography we're gonna be talking about. There's two ways that you could realistically light this. Now, I've been using a continuous light, a little bit like the light I've got on me right now. That is a really easy way of controlling your light. I either have one or I have two on there. They're not expensive at all. I think the whole kit cost me something like 80 pounds. And I use it for video, I use it for all kinds of stuff, but that's a really easy way to light your food or whatever it is you're lighting. Or if you don't have lights and you don't particularly want to buy them, which I totally understand, the easiest way to work from there is to just take the photo near to a window because that's going to work like a big softbox, flooding light onto your food, perfect to be honest that can look sometimes that can look even better such a natural light source and so soft coming through a window especially if it's cloudy outside it's lovely so that's a really really good way of lighting your subject if you don't want to use lights now food of course you need to style the situation so obviously you plate up your food you want to think about colors and things like that for me I like to have my food usually in the center of the image and then think about what I can have around it that makes sense. So for example, if it's gonna be something like a lemon meringue pie, like this situation, we're gonna have different things that kind of match the color and the feel. But if it's something like this Mexican hot pot, which we just put in a bowl and then kind of put some things around it, a bit of bread worked out really nicely, a little bit of a tea towel coming in from the, from the corner, uh, some plants, things like that, really helps to pop a bit of color and balance the image so that you've got things in, in different corners so the kind of weight of the image is nicely distributed. It can also look great to actually take your photo through things. So for example, if you have got a plant that you're gonna use, you can take your photo through the leaves of a plant. Oh, that is one of my favorite things. It just frames things up so well. It looks really, really good. But this doesn't just have to be food. You can do it with drinks. You can do it with a, a nice bottle of whiskey, for example. You just need to think about how you wanna have color in there, how you wanna balance the image, all that kind of stuff. So the second type of photography that you can try, very, very similar to this, is product photography. Now, I love this. I think it's super creative, super fun, because you're trying out different types of things to try and, try and make this product look as good as possible. Again, loads of the stuff we talked about before comes into play. So lighting, I'm using continuous lights for most of these shots, but absolutely window light is gonna work. You just need to make sure things are positioned in a way that looks good. Setting up and styling your shot is a big one. So for example, I use either some kind of backdrop that I've either got something that you wouldn't necessarily think about, but something like, for example, a literal piece of wood 
can make a nice, a really nice backdrop. I had some wood in the garden, and to be honest, that made a perfect kind of backdrop. Or you can actually buy backdrops that you can put there and have have as your backdrop, super easy to use. They can wipe clean, all that kind of stuff. Of course, you want to think about flat lay as well. So whatever the the food or the product is going to sit on, that's really important as well. Again, you can buy stuff or you can use things and get a bit creative. So for example, an old oven tray can actually look really good. It can kind of make things look uh, look a bit unique. You can do that kind of weathered urban feel, but it actually looks really, really good. Obviously we've talked about lighting in terms of lighting the product, but what about things like lighting in the back? Now I love adding some lights in the back, some colored lights. Now I just use, I've got hue lights, Philips hue lights just around my house. I've got loads of them, they're different colors. Really nice, works out really well, but I'd move them and actually use them to photograph some of these things so I can have, let's say, red and blue in the background. If I just use a black piece of card, which I bought for one pound at a local kind of craft shop, I can actually shine those lights onto the backdrop as well and I just create this whole scene. So you can go from almost nothing to very, very cool, different looking thing just by using some colored lights. Now, if you don't obviously have some Philips Hue lights or anything like that, you can just use your phone's flashlight function, but maybe with some kind of colored paper or tracing paper that's colored or something like that over the flashlight just to just to give a splash of color. But you don't really have to worry too much about all this stuff. It's just about getting creative with things like backdrops, styling, lighting, you know, angles, all that kind of stuff. And really, this is a great way to push that creativity. So the third type of photography that we can do at home right now portraits. Now I know you're thinking, you might not have someone to take a portrait of, you might have someone, but they really just don't want their photo taken, that's fine. You can do a self-portrait as well. There's loads of different situations that you can set up in your own home to take portraits. You can do moody portraits, just literally looking out a window, which has the added benefit of using the window light to actually light your subject, perfect. You could set something up where you've got your camera taking photo every 10 seconds or so. You can change position within the frame and then create some sort of composite where you're in loads of different positions at once. Or you can set up with a continuous light, just like I did, some interesting situations. And it looks like a studio kind of setting, but really it's one continuous light it's a blanket draped from a curtain rail behind to create a backdrop. Super, super easy to set up, but with really nice looking results. So if you've got someone who's willing to have their photo taken, you can kind of set up like a mock photography studio with a blanket, one light, and then just start taking photos. Now we've actually got full tutorial videos on all three of these types of photos, food photography, product photography, and portraits in the home. So you can absolutely check those out. I'll link them down in the description below. So you can go and check out those videos if you would like more detail. Of course though, that's just three things we can do at home. You know, We haven't even talked about toy photography or anything else. That's the only one I can think of off the top of my head, but anything else. So I'd love to hear your suggestions down in the comments. And actually, if there's anything you wanna see in a tutorial as well, pop it down there as well so we can absolutely make a tutorial about something you would like to see in the home would be great. There's links down in the description for all of the products used for all of the different photos and of course this video as well. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more stuff all the time. I will of course see you in the next video and as always, thanks for watching.